So, we'll soon destroy the world creating black holes. One of the more concerning ideas out there is that the experiments at CERN can lead to the production of black holes. Now, a quick search of CERN and black holes on YouTube will give you a few videos that are quite alarmist to say the least, but I want to argue they are also ill-informed. Now, black holes have gotten a bit of press recently with the first image of the massive black hole in M87 earlier this year. And black holes have often been represented by Hollywood as these interstellar bodies that suck in matter all around them, getting bigger and bigger. Sort of like a giant vacuum cleaner in space. But before we tackle the issue of black hole creation at CERN, we need to make sure we understand what they are. And I do stress that I'm only going to cover this superficially and an in-depth examination of black holes requires a sort of detailed video and I'm hoping to be a topic in a future video. Now, a definition that is often quoted is that black holes is a body that is so massive that its resultant gravity is therefore so strong that not even light can escape it. Now, the distance from which the black hole, which marks the boundary where the light can or cannot escape, is called the event horizon. Now this radius of this event horizon is known as the Schwarzschild radius and it's dependent on the mass. Now this formula not only tells us the conditions of the black hole but it also tells us the limit of how small our black hole can go. So a better definition, at least hypothetically at least, is that a black hole is where its density is so great that at a certain distance, the Schwarzschild radius, light cannot escape. In other words, for us to have a black hole, we need to not only have the mass, but it needs to be concentrated in a very small volume. But its gravitational pull overall is determined not by its density, but by the mass alone. And that pull depends on how far you're away. So really the distance you are away from it. Now let me help you understand by giving this hypothetical example. Let's say we get the sun and we compress the sun in itself to a point, so it becomes a black hole. It will be incredibly dense and its event horizon would be about three kilometers from its center. So we have a black hole that is about six kilometers across, which marks the boundary where light cannot escape. So how would Earth's orbit change? It wouldn't, and neither would any of the planets. Why? Because the gravitational pull is dependent on the sun's mass. That hasn't changed, only its density has changed, and the position of the Earth is still the same. And so you would need to be incredibly close to it to actually be pulled in. Earth would stay in its orbit. But fortunately for us, this can never happen. A star, in order to naturally evolve into a black hole, needs to have a mass at least 10 times that of our sun. So don't stress, we're safe for the moment. Now, according to particle physics theory, at very high energy collisions, I might add, much higher than what CERN can do at the moment, they may be able to generate what are called quantum black holes. And they're often called primordial black holes because we believe they existed in the early stages of the Big Bang. Now, these are not your stellar variety. These black holes, if they exist and existed in the early stages of the Big Bang, are incredibly small. In fact, if CERN and other high energy particles were able to create them, they would be of the size in the order of 10 to the minus 35 meters across. And with a mass of about 100 thousandth of a gram, they would be still incredibly dense. Now that number means nothing to you. So let me give you a perspective how small that really is. If I take my primordial black hole and I enlarge it, say, to about a millimeter across, then the proton has a diameter of 10 to the power of 14 kilometers. Now that's 8,000 times bigger than the diameter of our solar system. The hydrogen atom at that scale would have a diameter of the order of the size of our Milky Way, which is about 100,000 light years across. And most of that is empty space. And what about a tiny grain of sand? Well, at that scale, the tiny grain of sand would be 100 times bigger than the observable universe. So what's the takeaway? If a quantum hole was actually created, and you can create many of them, and they'd all be moving at relatively fast speeds below the speed of light, the chances of them of actually interacting with any matter whatsoever would be very slim indeed. In fact, if they leave CERN, leave the planet, leave the solar system and go out into the universe, they could travel forever without ever interacting with matter and thus growing bigger. Now, there's another reason why we shouldn't be worried. 
When Stephen Hawking theorized in the 70s of the existence of these quantum black holes, he determined that they actually released energy. And this is called Hawking radiation. Now, the rate at which they do this is dependent on their mass, and the larger the black hole, the slower the decay. Stellar sized black holes do release this radiation, and they, as a result, shrink, and this is really conservation of energy. But due to their size, this is going to happen extremely slowly. We are talking about an unimaginable 10 to the power of 64 or 10 with 64 zeros after years. To give you perspective, our universe is only 13.7 billion years. Even a hypothetical small black hole, which let's say about the size of a mountain, would still take 10 billion years to evaporate. Well, that sounds scary, but these are stellar black holes and they're going to be around much, much longer. But what about our quantum black holes, the ones that are going to be created at CERN? If they are produced, they would last only momentarily. They would evaporate almost instantaneously in a fraction of a fraction of a second. So even if we are able to create them in a particle detector, they would not even make it out of the detector, let alone Switzerland. Now, if you're a physicist trying to observe these or to observe the effect of these, you can see the job of detecting these would be incredibly difficult indeed. Now, thirdly, the energy requirement to make these black holes is well beyond CERN's capabilities. So it's not going to happen anytime soon. But there's another reason why we shouldn't be worried and our last reason for today. The energy values to generate these black holes actually already exist in nature. They occur in supernovas, ordinary stars. In fact, they occur right above your heads right now. In essence, what's happening is cosmic rays are constantly bombarding our atmosphere. And as a result, the cosmic rays interacting with the matter up there is causing the production of exotic particles at energy significantly higher than what CERN is already capable of. So therefore, if black holes were created, they're probably created right now in our atmosphere. And the fact that we are still here suggests that we're pretty safe. They don't pose any threat if they actually are created. So in summary, can CERN make black holes? Well, not yet, but it may be in the future. Should we be worried? I don't think so. I hope that's helped you alleviate a little of your fears about black holes and CERN. I'm planning to produce more videos on CERN, the physics that occurs there, some of the other myths that are around, and other areas of physics explained at a high school level. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.